Hello and welcome. Today I'd like to show you how to customize Finale into the way you like it. And we will be doing this tutorial in Windows 10 uh, with the Fall Creators update. Um, you can see down at the bottom, today is the 28th of November. And I'd like to show you how to at least customize the look of Finale so you can be more productive uh, with your composing, arranging, uh, engraving, or what have you. So I'm in version... Hello. Thank you. So I'm in version 25.5 right now. And on the startup screen, what I'd like you to do is go up to the gear icon. That's going to pull up your settings. Now, all of these do different things uh, according to what you like. So if we go, go up into new, this gives you the maestro font, um, well, the Maestro font, just as it is. You can change this if you'd like to. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't touch this. Uh, startup action, launch window. You can um, you can change this if you'd like. You can uh, when you launch Finale, you can if you want to, you can have it go straight into a default document. So um, new default document. So let's actually go ahead and try that. So click apply. Okay. Let's actually go ahead and close all this out. There's Audacity, so let's go ahead and open it back up. Um, hello? Finale. And Finale. There we go. Cool. Took it a sec. That was bizarre. Okay, so maybe don't do that. Um, Quick shortcut. So to get to um, the startup screen um, for Windows, if you press Control, Shift, and the letter N as in Nancy, it'll pull up the, the, the startup window. So let's go back into the gear icon. And uh, that took way too long to get into there. So let's just do the launch window. That's what it was. Um, Default document, you can you can uh, do this. You can um, change the view percentage. You can increase it or decrease it. You can um, change if you want to look in scroll view or page view. Page view is default. Studio view, you can show all these stuff if you want to. I usually don't touch these. Um, open, not much to do in here. Um, really, if anything else, if you've been working with Finale for years, uh, you could check this box right here. Set human playback to standard for Finale notation files created prior to 2014. This is if you're using anything, you know, that's properly ancient at this point. Um, you're a very diehard, dedicated Finale user. Um, if anything else like that, I would just leave that. Save. This is something I'd like you to go into. I think everybody should do this. This will save everybody a big headache. Auto save. Make sure this is checked. Every five minutes seems to be good. Um, you can also check it to maybe every three minutes, every two minutes. Um, I wouldn't have it auto save, you know, like every like 30 seconds or anything. I don't think you can do that, but every five minutes or so, hell, I'll just change it to um, every three minutes. Um, and then make sure this is checked. Make backups when saving, fi saving files. This is good in case... Um, God knows anything happens to it. Um, I actually want to make a video of, of showing you how to back up your Finale Files folder in the future um, because I recently had a mishap where I didn't do this and I actually lost a file and I and there was no way to recover it. So I'd like to actually make a video in the future uh, showing you how to actually how how to sit how to set up your backup on your computer. Um, anyhow, so human playback. Um, unless you really know what you're you're doing here, I would just leave this alone. Uh, we've got view. You can then just um, a couple things in here. Uh, show all messages. This is going to show you every single pop-up. Um, whenever you click on anything, I would leave that unchecked. Uh, show tools menu. You can uncheck this if you want, but that just eliminates you know the top row if you're if you're just simply using uh, keystrokes on your keyboard. You really know how those uh, shortcuts, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Edit. Um, you can do some pretty fancy stuff in there, blah, blah, blah. Automatic music spacing, um, I would leave all this checked. Folders, you can change destination folders um, if you'd like to, if you don't want to save to the C drive. Um, 
or what have you. You can change that. This is fun. This can be a little bit fun. If you don't like the, the color of certain layers, you can change it or, or certain, um, for example, um, I've messed around with this a little bit. Articulations, I've changed the colors of just to distinguish them between um, uh, you know, regular articulations and maybe like um, expressions or, or whatnot. But by default, I think Finale does a very good job of um, color coding everything, but not making, not making it too distracting. Uh, your playback cursor, I've actually changed this a couple times because I found the, the green um, cursor by default, which is like a lime green or something like that, is can be difficult to follow along with. So I've made it like a red, which is easier to follow along with. Um, palettes and backgrounds, this one is great because if you um, um, have trouble seeing your screen or, or have a rather large screen and you, you, you want bigger palettes, you can actually choose large uh, tool icons, which I actually have checked, um, which means I can, I have a bigger screen, I have a 27 inch screen, so I can actually um, um, have room for all this. And then this, um, you have no idea how much people complain about this. Uh, for example, if you're working in the, um, the, uh, whatever this palette is, the, the slur tool palette, um, with all these lines and stuff like that, You'll, you'll have to actually click the um, slur tool first to, to bring up this palette. And you want to uncheck this box right here under palettes and backgrounds where it says close subsidiary, subsidiary palettes when leaving tool. If you uncheck that, this will stay here. If you, leave, if you check this, it'll close um, this palette when you go to another tool. Um, you know, click away from this palette. So uncheck that if you're tired of that. Show rest palette in simple entry. I leave this unchecked because I know the shortcuts for uh, rests because this rest palette can take up a lot of space on your screen. Um, close simple entry palette when leaving tool. Again, I leave this unchecked. I tend to go to the simp simple uh, entry palette quite a lot. So um, I leave this unchecked. And if anything else, oh, Oh, this is really cool because this got uh, reintroduced once again. Um, you can change the background, um, basically this color right in the back right here if you want to, to a different color if you want, uh, to maybe a darker color, to a brighter color, whatever you like, or a graphic file. This is great because you can actually select um, dark gradient if you'd like to. And even for the manuscript texture, which is what you see right here, the, the paper, if you are tired of looking at the blinding white paper right here, you can actually go into graphical file and they have a couple to choose from. So I chose um, beige paper, which is nice. You can also choose score paper, which is a little bit more of a yellow uh, hint of it. So I leave it at that. Then after all, click apply. And you can already see it already changed the background to a nice, um, more of a darker color and it kind of helps your eyes a little bit more if all else fails and you just realize you screwed this all up and you just want the defaults you can just click reset all preferences this is a new um setting in finale version 25 you will not have this option in any versions prior to version 25. so if you really would like to reset to everything to defaults um this is a good version for you if you need that while we're on the topic of screen um, screen resolution and whatnot, or, or, or hue, I guess you could call it. Um, if you're on Windows 10, um, here, here's one thing that I, I actually have set up. This is a Windows feature. Um, on your keyboard, press the hold, uh, let me try that again. Hold the Windows key on the bottom left-hand corner and the, the letter I as an igloo, and that'll bring you into your Windows settings. Now up here, go up to uh, System, and I have this thing called Nightlight, which is under here. Again, you have to have um, Windows 10 on here. It doesn't work on Windows 8, I believe. I don't believe it works. And I could be wrong. Certain Windows versions, Windows 10 versions may or may not have this. Nightlight settings, and I actually have this turned on. Um, it is um, 7.30 at night. I have this turned on. So whenever 6 o'clock rolls around, my screen actually starts to fade to a, a, a dimmer color uh, as you can see you can really set it I like it to be about right there so it's not too yellow and this is nice because it doesn't put too much strain on your eyes 
and then you can just go ahead and turn off and whatnot. So that's the only Windows feature I, I, I play around with. So you've got all that set up. So let's go into default document. There is more to it than that. So let's say, um, so I've customized these palettes uh, for my screen in particular. And how can you customize palettes? Well, look at this. So if you go up to window right up here, you can first of all check which palettes you want um, on, uh, displayed on your screen with, with simply just by um, checking them. Um, like for example, file palette you can have right here. I don't use file palette. That's cool. That's neat. Um, I'm not sure why it does that. I don't think that's supposed to happen, but anyhow. Um, if you want to, you can actually, you should, there it goes. You should be able to snap it to the edge of your screen. Uh, if anybody in Make Music is watching what's happening, I'd like to know why it's uh, why it's doing that. That's kind of funky. Uh, it could be my computer. I have no idea what's doing that. But you can also just drag it. Unfortunately, you cannot nudge it. I wish you could nudge it. That would be nice because um, it doesn't really snap to other palettes, which would be nice if it did, but no, it's not that big of a deal. And there you go. You can just slide them in and it'll remember that. But let's say, um, just for the sake of demonstration, um, like for example, let's look at the uh, simple entry palette. Simple entry palette. Oops, there's an idea. Let's say you don't want the eraser in here. You don't want one of these buttons to be shown up because you never use it. So what you'll do is you'll go down to Window, Customize Palettes, and then choose the palette. In this case, Simple Entry Palette. And check this out. You can actually remove certain buttons from here. So what do I not use? So the eraser. I don't ever use the re eraser, like ever. So remove it. And this will basically just take it off. You can already see it removed it. And now it gives you more room over here for, for other things. Um, what else do I never use, actually? I never use that. I never use that. I personally have never used tie because I always use either T when I'm tying notes or using the number pad sl uh, forward slash. So um, that just free up some space right here. kind of helps simplify everything. Um, and you just close. And then you can also reset it, which is really nice. So there's that. And you can do this for th any palette that you have up here. And same with palettes on the side here as well. You can also, if you'd like, let's see, simple entry rests. I believe there is a way you could, there we go. There is a way you can stack them on the sides. Um, so the way I did that was kind of messy. I think this should be fixed in the future. But I put it there and then I kind of halfway put it in, as you're, well, you're watching it, so you can you can then line stuff up like that, and you should be able to put even more stuff here. Let's see what's another useless palette I ever use. The edit palette. There we go. Let's see. So you can you can really have fun. You can really manipulate it to uh, the extremes. Um, just be careful you don't overlap it. I guess. Yeah. Well, I guess you can't really mess it up that bad. And um, that's pretty much all there is to for the palettes. You can just remove them as such. Just click and drag them off. So you need to be careful because you need to grab them at the very edge. This little um, border right here is where you'll grab them and then you'll move them. Um, like this guy. I can just nudge a little bit over. Uh, you can push them off the screen though. So you need to be aware of that. See if so for example I can. Can I? Oh wait did they fix it? They may have fixed it because I know before you could have you could push certain palettes off the screen, but it looks like they may have fixed that. Well, there you go. All right, so I guess you never have to worry about that anymore. So um, feel free to be as aggressive with the palettes as you like. Sweet. Okay. Now I learned something new today as well. So, anyhow, for other things, um, I. I mean, this is how I have it all set up and whatnot. And um, that's pretty much all there is to customizing 
um, customizing the, the, the general look for, for now. Um, you can definitely do a lot more things if you want to. Um, if, if I didn't show you, I had another video that I did. Um, top 10 key short, uh, shortcuts that I always use, or top 12 or whatever. Definitely check that out if you want some more tips. And um, I'll be making more of these soon. I haven't been making finale videos, but you guys seem to like them. So um, definitely subscribe for more, and I'll be making more of these videos in the near future. Thank you guys all for watching, and take care.